What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Mike Dyack, also known as Mikey Pipes, with Peter the Sponge. We are a plumbing and heating and air conditioning contractor based in Valley Stream, New York, which soon to be in Hilton Head, South Carolina, or it could be Charleston, haven't decided yet, but I am licensed in the entire state of South Carolina and soon to be the state of Florida. Uh, right now, we are heading to a service call in the village of Malvern. Malvern is located in Nassau County on Long Island in the state of New York. Customer has a central air conditioning system that is not working properly. It is 48 degrees out. It's been warm, it gets cold. It's kind of like that gray season because today is Monday, April 11th. The weather kit gets cold at night, it gets warm during the day. People want their air conditioning on during the day and they turn on the heat at night. You know what? It's a luxury. <laughs> we have that luxury. So we're, right now we're heading on the, uh, on the Meadowbrook State Parkway and we're gonna head on to the Sun State and we're gonna head over to Malvern and uh, see if we can get them up and running. So stick around, smash that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. There's no cost or obligation. Peter, I'm not gonna repeat her last name but her first name is Julie. Yeah. She definitely sounds hot. Probably. <laughs> hot or not? I'll go with yeah. I'm gonna go with yeah too. Take a vote right now. The we'll randomly pick one of the winners to win a Pipe Doctor Mikey Pipe swag package. Okay. Hot or not? Comment section down below. Pause now and guess. The last name is kind of hot. I can't repeat <laughs> it because it's just privacy. Privacy concerns. Hippo laws, right? Hippo laws. Let's go see what's going on. Are you Julie? Yes, I am. How are you? I'm Mike. How are you? How are you? Are you? How are you? Good. You're not Hi. Julie. No. <laughs> Hi. I'm Mike. How are you? Good. How are you? Can we come in? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Tell me what's going on. You're better off explaining it. So it's actually the upstairs one. Okay, what's it doing? At the end of last year, kind of like the condenser would just go off and we'd have to hit the reset button a bunch. But the what reset button? Would run on the actual there. condenser on the side. There's a little button on it you push? Yeah, a little red button. Okay. Is it a ream? Uh, Rude? What yeah, yeah rude. Yeah. So you hit that reset button, then it would work again. It would work for a little bit, and then at the end of last year, it just wouldn't come on at all. Okay. Turn it on. So do me a favor. Let's go, go to the thermostat. Is it built okay. clean right now? I just cleaned them okay. like a couple days. Let's ago. go turn go to the thermostat and set okay. the cool to on, okay. and the uh, fan to auto, and the temperature lowered to I don't know. Like so it, so it would normally turn on. Okay. How do we see the outdoor unit? Uh, right around. Okay. Side. Let's go see. All right. This way we go. Oh yeah? <laughs> oh cool. I just heard a click. They're 20 plus something years old. Okay. So this everything was put in This from 2003. This is a 30. It's two and a half ton. And this one is a. 30 as well, also from May of 2003. Which one have you been pushing? The one on the left or the one on the right? The left one. And that little red, the faded yeah, red little thing? Side, yeah. Okay. So that is a high, I'll explain that what that is. This little red little button right there. Okay. And it says push to reset. It is a high pressure um, sensor. If the system is not working properly and it's too much, high, too much pressure in the system on one side of it, it'll turn itself off. The only way to reset it is push it in. Pushing it in over and over and over again is definition of insanity, right, expecting right. different different results because it's still gonna it's still yeah. popping, right? So one of a couple things. You could have a refrigeration flow issue, compressor issue, you could have a dirty coil, you could have a bad boat fan motor. We'll see. You turned it on, I heard a click, but it's not doing anything. Yeah. So yeah, doing good. Peter, let's grab a tool bag, we'll take the cover off, look look things out of the ordinary first. It looks beyond filthy. And I I can't imagine what the house side feels like because that side facing a house is always the dirtiest. We're going to find out in a few moments. Peter, grab the, uh, let's take, pop this off first. Let's pull our power out. All right. We're going to grab a quarter inch driver, take the screw out right there. And we'll see what's going on under the hood. Look rude. Rude. Okay. Pry that back. No, here. Teach a man to fish, you'll feed him for a life, right? Okay, put that off to the side. 
let's see what that coil looks like right there. All right, not too bad. Not too bad here. But let's take that, take that screw out, that screw out. I'll take a look inside the cabinet there and just lift that up and put it against the house right there if possible. Actually, let me see what it looks like on here. Let's see. All right, so this side looks pretty clean. It's that side. It's gonna be bad. Let's see how bad that looks. So a couple observations, the amount of oil leaking out of the condenser fan motor, probably shot. We're gonna test the capacitor shortly. We're gonna clean out the inside of the condenser, the base of the condenser. Our coil is starting to wear, as you can see, but not terrible, not terrible. But let's just give this thing a little TLC and hope we'll be all right. All right, so with the amount of oil coming out of this sealed unit, right? Uh, we're gonna change it out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take some scratchy paper and we're gonna clean off the hub here, right? Not the hub, clean off the the, uh, the shaft. That way I can pull this off easy because I don't have a uh, bleed puller in my truck because I didn't transfer it over yet from my old truck. So uh, we do have the, the condenser fan motor, 1075, 208, 230 at what horsepower? Where's the horsepower? There it is, one fifth. So I got this one. All right, now that I cleaned the shaft with some scratchy paper, I'm gonna use some coil oil, penetrating oil, just to get it in there, penetrate in there. Then okay, we'll hit the shaft up a little bit as well. Okay, let that penetrate and soak in. Take a little uh, pair of pliers, take that little set screw out and pull the fan blade, easy peasy. Wow, she's stubborn. Stubborn as a mule. Good. Okay. Now, will she come out? Ask the million dollar question. What do you think, Peter? First, to answer the question, hot or not. The guy, the son watches a YouTube channel, so I'm not gonna say hot, I'm not gonna say not, I'm gonna say in the middle. <laughs> All right, let's see. Do you think this is gonna come out in one shot? I'm just gonna grab it right here and pull it up. What do you think? It's old, but you lubed it, so. I lubed it. I have, I have, I have hope. Ha <laughs> Nice. Skills. Hi, Peter. Hello. All right, so while Peter has been using the Viper Venom Pack by Refrigeration Technologies to clean the condensing coil, I took out my condenser fan motor, took this one out, All right? She shot, by the way shot shot and she doesn't even spin freely anymore i put a new one in by us motors this is the consolidator it's really nice it's one size fits all almost as long as you have the same speed and same horsepower speed is rpm horsepower and hp we're good i got my reversing wires tucked in there with a uh, zip tie i rerouted the wires through the, the uh, electrical chase peter has rinsed off the condensing coil and now we're going to reinstall the new condenser fan motor with a new amrad capacitor this compressor uses a 45 microfarad uh, capacitor the condenser fan motor uses a 7.5 so i'm going to grab a, a 45 7.5 from the truck and we're going to install it right there in the electrical compartment all right so let's go to the truck the Metris. This is a 2022 Mercedes Metris. Um, earlier, um, I packed out this pullout tray. Now, one drawback is the height. If it was a little bit taller, I could fit a lot more in here because that's a problem. <laughs> All right? If it's a little bit taller, I could fit a lot more in here. And I'm really, really, really considering. I don't think they make a tall. I'm really considering cutting off the top of this rearranging this and the other side and that way i can fit them in there i just don't have a roof on this and do i need a roof for this yeah i need a roof i need a base for this these are just pieces of, of uh, aluminum sheets that go there so i may end up having to relocate my capacitors 
to one of the shelves there. Maybe I'll relocate my steam stuff and put that here because I don't have enough to carry two. Um, I'll do a truck tour in the future with this. But um, for now, this is what works for me. All right, so I just slid in the new AMRAD capacitor in there, dual capacitor. Um, one of the things I'm also trying to do as, as a good technician is being observant of your surroundings. Take a look at that. See that? Look at that. Look how the piece is moving around like that. This was never secured or not secured, and that's a problem. We're probably gonna end up having to replace this um, contactor. Contactor gets a 24 volt signal from the thermostat and energizes L1, L2 to T1, T2. This is 110 volts, that's 110 volts together, 240 volts. When this contact is pulled in, it brings that power across to T1, T2, and we have uh, power for our compressor and condenser fan motor. That's all it's for. Power for a compressor, condenser fan motor, 240 volts. So I got my long, trusty insulated screwdriver and it just spins. <laughs> how how fitting. <laughs> how fitting. I'm using I'm using this long blue screwdriver, complements of a certain manufacturer. Um, and it spins screws. Yeah. Literally, continuously spins screws. So wow. We're we'll gonna have to get him a new contactor. Too. All right, so I got my new contactor installed. Um, waiting on Peter to get the grinder. I've already secured the set screw to the condenser fan motor blade. We're gonna cut the shaft off low. It don't need to be so long. You know, be a nice guy, be a mensch, cut your shaft. All right, our system is running. And if you heard what the homeowner said, she's, <laughs> they've never seen it run this well before. Um, we have some warm discharged air coming out of the top of the condenser. My outdoor temperature is only 54 degrees, so I cannot test refrigerant levels to see whether it's properly cooling or heat or, or cooling properly because it's just too low. So that's what we're working with right now. Um, and most importantly, we took a deposit to replace it. You ready for this? Ready. You can be like Gumby. Forget about being the sponge. So there's the stairs going downstairs and here's the stairs going upstairs. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll be adventurous. <laughs> All right, so let's see what we have up here. Uh, you okay, Peter? Yeah. All right, so at least it's the first one. All right, so if we, regardless of what we put in, unless it's a ream, we'll probably give him another ream. And we'll, that way the, um, the supply plenum is the same orientation and the return plenum is the same orientation. Let's take a look at our model and serial number. That's a UBHC. And it is a perfect 240 volt air handler. Perfect.